do you do what you gotta do? Sharon Hornell from here, also the Jam Grandma in my curlers. I've got a funeral this morning, and so I am in my curlers doing my videos because that's who I am, that's what I do, and I guess it's kind of a good filtering tool. If you don't like curlers, don't watch my videos. Uh, my favorite hater calls me the Wicked Witch of the West and says that there should be a warning across all my videos that I'm so scary looking and I look like the Wicked Witch in the West and that I should um, not be allowed on video. You know what? To each his own. Don't care. So, today, do what you gotta do. Do you do what you gotta do? You gotta go to a funeral. I used to be scared to death and hate funerals. I, I would avoid them like the plague. I watch the funerals that I absolutely positively had to go to. Um, since 2010 and my sudden cardiac arrest, I have a totally different perspective on death and dying. And I look at it as a transition. It's not the end to me. So I look at it more as a celebration of their life and the lives that they've touched and the experiences they had and the impact that they made in the world while they were here. And to me, that is such a more powerful way to, to go to a funeral and look at the event. Um, I find it fascinating to go to funerals now and, and watch people and watch how people experience death and how they experience the lives of the people that have passed on in different ways. <coughs> went to my grandma's funeral not too long ago and I found it fascinating that my grandma was 99 almost 100 years old she was just shy of 100 years old like less than two months um, short of being 100 years old yet none of us talked about her or told stories at her funeral I found it so interesting that and maybe it was because our family is so spread out and it was an opportunity to catch up with one another because we haven't seen one another in some instances for decades because we've been spread apart across the whole country, that there was a lot of talking and visiting going on and a lot of, of positive energy and camaraderie, but, but we weren't telling stories or talking about my grandma and the amazing impact that she'd had and the, that she was the reason that all of us were there. So I just find it fascinating to, to watch the behavior at different events, not just at funerals, but at all events now. I think I've become much more an observer of life and of behavior and of experiences than I was before. Right now I'm experiencing a cold, which is super annoying because I have to cough and sneeze and blow my nose all the time. My nose feels like, like hamburger, actually. So <clears throat> do what you gotta do. We do what we gotta do. Uh, and if, if in some instances, that's go to funerals. That's participate in activities that we might not feel awesome about, but we need to, to show up and be there and, and support other people as they go through these experiences as well did the BP Challenge Day 53 today. We're talking about, I think we're on the fourth segment of the 90 day challenge. I break it down into segments and in, instead of it being a 90 day block of, of activity and challenges that we're gonna do, I it, it is all toward one major goal, but we break that down into sections and segments to make it doable and possible. Break everything down into bite-sized pieces. So not only is the 90 days broken down into actually 10 day segments, so there's nine take 10 day segments, but it's also broken down within each of those. It's the same process repeating over and over again, the overall process, as well as at least seven times you'll go through the smaller process. So by the time you get to the end of the 90 day challenge, you totally have ingrained in your being the process. You know the process like the back of your hand and you can do it automatically from then on. You don't have to think about each of the steps. You just automatically will go through them in your mind and you'll automatically get better results based on learning that process and applying that process naturally. So today was picking the top one thing out of, after yesterday we brainstormed all the possible options of things that we could do to apply to this segment. For me it's about supplements and dietary supplements, minerals and vitamins and things and what you can do to supplement the food sources that we eat, the foods we eat, to move me toward the results that I want in my 90 day challenge. Now I am personally doing a blood pressure challenge. I need to reduce my blood pressure by like 20 points so I don't have to go on blood pressure medication. I am <clears throat> massively resisting going on blood pressure medication because I think that there are many lifestyle changes that even I can still make because over the last couple of years, I've let a couple of behaviors creep into my life that I had stopped and prevented. Um, and I, I changed my habits for years after my cardiac arrest and I let a couple of things creep back into my life <coughs> that I believe are negatively impacting my blood pressure. So if I change those things, if I change my lifestyle, if I 
take some actions and that's why I'm doing the 90 day challenge. If I do those things, I know that I can create the result that I want. I can in 90 days get my blood pressure down enough so that I don't have to go on medication and I can also keep that up for the rest of my life. So again, I don't have to go on medication ever for high blood pressure. I think it's fascinating that prior to my cardiac arrest, I always had super duper low blood pressure. And since that event and since the installation of my, I call it my Iron Man, my Iron Man, um, I have high blood pressure. And it could be part, in part due to one of the medications, which is a beta blocker that I take for my ICD that increases your blood pressure. And especially when you go off it. And I, being the person that treats myself as my own science experience, but went off it for a couple of times for like a year and I, that could have screwed up my blood pressure too. I don't know, but I'm in the process of fixing it through this 90 day challenge. Whenever I do a challenge, I like to take people with me through it because I can share and teach them the process as well. And it's a skill that everybody can use the rest of their life. How many of us don't face challenges? Uh, I don't know anybody. I don't know anybody on the planet alive over a year old that doesn't have challenges. And a lot of people before they're a year old have challenges. So it's an incredible skill set to have. And it, it's a learned thing, how to deal with challenges. It is a learned behavior. We are not born knowing how to overcome obstacles and challenges. We learn how it. Now, a lot of people do a lot of things to avoid challenges. A lot of people just ignore challenges and obstacles, hoping they'll go away. And they usually do go away. Everything generally resolves itself one way or another. But is it the optimal way of resolving itself? Is it the outcome you really want? Or would you rather take control of your life and be in charge of your life and your outcome and your results and handle the challenges the way you want to handle them, not just let stuff happen to you in your life? So today was picking and sharing the number one option for this particular segment. For me, it's just a multivitamin. Pick a great multivitamin, take a great multivitamin once a day from now on. <coughs> Now, I would say from now to the end of the challenge would be what I'm committing to. But you know, I'm going to take it from now on. I will test this same one from now till the end of the challenge. But after that, then I will probably reevaluate and say, is this the best multivitamin for me? Or can I find another one? Because I'm always looking for continuous improvement. Can I find another one that serves my personal health needs better? And guess what? I probably will be able to because the world is always changing. Different options are always becoming available. So something better is usually available down the road. But I find the best thing I can right now and I start with that. Maybe it's not the absolute positive best, but I find something and I start with that. So that was the BP challenge for today. Funeral, BP challenge. Um, do what you gotta do. You do what you gotta do every day. I am making my videos in my curlers this morning. Do I have to be making my videos this morning in my curlers? No, but does that work best for me? Because I know I can make my videos this morning go to the funeral, come back home, and process my videos. That works best for me. We have to set things up in our lives so that they work for us. <clears throat> and that's what I'm doing. Um, I do what I gotta do. I do what I say I'll do. And I've gotten very good at keeping my mouth shut and not committing to things that I think are gonna be a super big struggle for me or that I don't really wanna do. For a lot of years, a lot of decades, I always did what I thought I should do. Maybe you can relate to that. A lot of us do what we think we should do or we have to do or we must do. But how many of us do what we really want to do, what we love to do, what we know is in our best interest? And if we're doing what's in our best interest, it's usually providing value to the world. I've gotten a lot better about saying no or saying, you know, that's not right for me at this time. I'm not going to commit to doing it. But when I commit to doing something, when I say I'm going to do it, I figure out a way to get it done. Especially, and most especially, when I commit to doing something myself. If I say I'm going to do a 90-day challenge, I'm going to show up and I'm going to do a 90-day challenge every day. And I'm going to do the thing that I say I'm going to do. I'm not going to commit to it if I think that I'm, I'm going to just try or I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm not going to commit to it. I just won't say anything. I, so if you ask me to do something and I don't say anything, it's kind of my way of saying no sometimes. A lot of times I'll come right out and say no. But other times, if I don't want to hurt your feelings, I might find a nicer way of saying no. Or this isn't the right time. Because a lot of times, this isn't the right time. I'm not saying no, but not right now. And not right now is not an absolute no. It means I got other priorities right now, but I will make time for it down the road. Don't know when that's going to be necessarily, but I'm not going to commit to it until I can commit to it. 
um, a lot of people aren't that consistent. They aren't that um, true to their word. I mean, I know a lot of people that say they'll do something and then when you go to find them because they've committed to doing something, they are nowhere to be found. Don't be that person. Um, it's better to say no up front than to lead people on and let them think that you're going to do something, you're going to change, you're going to be a certain way, you're going to act and do something. When you know, because a lot of times we already know up front, I'm not ever going to do that. I'm not ever going to work with that person. I'm not never, I'm not ever going to go on a date with you. Why would you not just tell somebody, no, we're not, I, I don't feel like we're a fit. We're not going to ever be a fit. So go find somebody that's good for you, that's better for you. Um, Should have told my ex-husband that. Dang, lesson learned, right? Um, so do what you got to do. Do what you got to do. Do what you say you're going to do. And just be yourself. Be you. Be true to yourself. If it feels good to you, it's right for you. If it doesn't feel good to you, guess what? It's not right for you. And if it's not right for you, don't do it. Right? If we could just learn to listen to ourselves and really pay attention to our bodies and ourselves and our intuition and our guidance and our whatever you call it, uh, we would be so much happier and so much better off. So what have you got going today? I'm trying to think what else. Funeral, I'm actually going with my daughter to get my nails done today. I committed to her that I would. I committed to her that I would. Therefore, I am going to do it. And I committed to go to the funeral. And so we'll all go to that and support one another through a really tough situation for a lot of people. And we'll do what we got to do. I challenge you to, number one, do what you got to do to take care of yourself, those you love and care about, and make the world a better place. I think everyone should want to make the world a better place and give value and add value to the world. That's just my opinion. Argue with me if you like. I would love that. I love a good debate, by the way. Um, and number two, do for sure what you commit to doing. And if for some reason something happens, because life gets in the way and stuff comes up, you cannot do what you committed to do or do what you say you can do. As soon as you know that you're not going to be able to fulfill on a commitment, you let everyone involved know. That's how you maintain your personal integrity. That's how you be the stand-up, honest, truthful person that other people want to be around and want to be involved with in their life. That's how you actually save face. It might temporarily feel bad to let somebody down, but better to let them down when they have other options. And, and I say, if you're going to let them down, give them a, another solution. Give them another provider. I have never done this, but if I had to let a customer go or let a client go or if I couldn't meet a commitment that I had made to them, I for sure would find another person or another service or another thing that could get that done for them or else I would hire that other person to get it done for them in the time frame that I promised, uh, <clears throat> which is probably what I would do. But I would not, um, not, not tell them or disappear. One of the weirdest experiences I've ever had is in my Italian food business. I actually, in the last couple of years of running that business, had people that just didn't call, didn't show up for work, and were gone forever. I never, ever experienced that before and the first couple the first time it happened I was flabbergasted I couldn't believe it I'm like how could somebody just not not show up for work I thought they were dead how could and I'm calling around you know trying to find him with their parents and stuff well it turns out he was in jail but how could you not call not show up not have somebody call and let an, an organization know just call and say hey I quit I got another opportunity I'm out of here I hate working for you call and say something but don't just leave people off on the hook wondering that's just immature really bad behavior just saying all right have an amazing day if i can help you in any way hit me up in the comments below otherwise i will be with you tomorrow to report on my transition from the brick and mortar world of offline businesses and corporate america to the online world catch you later bye